The Social Network has a fantastic soundtrack, and I'm obviously not the first person to say that. Written by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, the music truly elevates the emotion of the film. It won the Academy Award for a good reason, and the score winning that award encouraged future composers to try out a more unconventional approach to film scoring. The soundtrack is full of synthesizers, and one of the synths that they utilized is the Swarmatron. And in this video, as a sound design exercise, we'll learn how to listen to a unique synth, analyze the characteristics, and recreate it in pure data. And as a bonus, we'll use sensors to play it. Speaking of electronics, this video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. After prototyping with breadboard, like what we'll do later in this video, you can design and order a professional printed circuit board from PCBWay. They also provide 3D printing service, which will be super useful when you want to make an enclosure for your synth or instrument. They even laser cut sheet metal, which should be great for making a faceplate for a custom modular synth, all at a highly competitive pricing. If you're interested, please check out the link below to go to their website. When you sign up, you'll be getting a $5 coupon, and there's a high chance that your first order is going to be $5, so it'll be free. All right, let's get started with the tutorial. So what is the Swarmatron anyway? It's a hardware synth that outputs 8 oscillators that can be performed with a single ribbon sensor, which allows you to change the pitch. It has a very distinct sound, which we'll get into in a bit. The Swarmatron is quite expensive and rare, so let's create a synth that is inspired by it. We can hear it throughout the soundtrack, and we're able to listen to it isolated in this video with the man himself playing it. Okay, what are the characteristics of this synth? We hear that chorusy and detuned sound that we hear in many analog synths. So what do I mean by detuned sound? It's the result of two oscillators, usually sawtooth waves, that are slightly out of pitch with another, much smaller than a semitone. Let's recreate that first. We have two sawtooth oscillators here, in a number box for changing the frequency. And we're going to shift the second oscillator's frequency by this much. And let's listen to it. We got that detuned sound happening in digital synth. But when we listen to the Swarmatron, it sounds a bit more round and less bright. So what do we do when we want a rounder and less bright sound? That's right, we filter it. VCF tilde is a low pass filter that also includes a resonance control, which will make the synth even more analog-like. And I'm just going to arbitrarily set the parameters. Awesome. It's already close to what we're going for. And let's add a horizontal slider as a digital ribbon controller. We can change the parameter setting like this. Okay, what's next? The unique feature of the Swarmatron is the span control. As stated earlier, this synth has 8 voices, and it includes a knob that detunes the 7 oscillators further away from the main oscillator. I think the simplest approach is this. We add more oscillators that are slightly off from another. By the way, having the send and receive object will make our patch cleaner, and we'll include another slider for the span control. As we increase the parameter, the 7 upper oscillators are shifted up further and further away. Awesome! I think this is a great start. You can fine-tune it further and get it close as possible to the original. Or you can begin to modify the synth to something new that fits your style. We can further improve the sound quality by applying effects. I usually just record the audio and apply effects in Ableton. You can follow this tutorial on how to record pure data audio. So apply your favorite saturation, chorus, echo, tape emulation, and reverb VSTs. And now we got something that may work well in the track that you're working on, or even in a film score. Finally, we're going to control this synth using sensors. The slight finger movements, in my opinion, also contributes to the distinct sound of the Swarmatron. The original uses a ribbon controller, so we're going to use something similar. I have a tutorial on ribbon controller, by the way. And we even have a force sensor layered underneath it so we have more control than the original. What we can potentially do is map the pressure to the span control. So we can press down on the sensor, and the span parameter increases. Or we can map it to a filter, and then have a knob that controls the span. It's all up to you. Okay, what's next? Again, we can fine-tune the synth further, and we can build an enclosure by 3D printing or using a foam board. We can also have an embedded version of the synth so that we don't need our laptop in order to perform it. 
it'll be all self-contained. And we can use Bella or Daisy for that. And of course, we're building this so that we can make music. Don't spend too much time fine-tuning. And I hope to see you compose and perform with what you built. Alright, have fun! And I'll have one more video before the year ends. I started this channel almost a year ago, and look how far we got. We can analyze an existing synth that's difficult to own, and we can create something that's inspired by it. And we're gonna continue to learn more next year. Alright, stay safe and take care.